Hello, this is Jason Kendall, and welcome to the next of my introductory astronomy lectures. Last time we were trying to finish up gravity, but I promised you a couple latter things based on the nature of how we know that gravity implies space-time curvature. Remember, the, all of our difficulties that we've had throughout all of these videos is that we've tried to establish what gravity is. Newton didn't say that there was any particular agent to gravity, he just described how it worked. So now what we're going to do is we're actually going to take it a step further and say the following thing is that gravity is a result of the curvature of space-time and things moving through space-time according to that curvature. And where does the curvature arise from? The curvature arise from the presence of matter, the presence of energy in space-time. So it's kind of a, a feedback loop. So space-time tells matter how to move and matter tells space-time how to curve. And that particular quote, uh, that little aphorism, comes from John Wheeler who coined it some time ago. In any event, so Let's see what we mean by curved space-time, because that's a very strange notion for a lot of people. People bark, balk at it a lot. Okay, so let's begin by looking at what we mean by measurement. Again, we have to go all the way back to measurement, because measurement is the key to anything in science. So what are we going to measure? We're going to measure things inside a laboratory, such inside this room or something. Um, so there's basically four situations that we want to think about and think about the result of things moving inside those four situations. The first one is the easiest to think about, although the, it's the one that nobody ever encounters. So let's take this room that we're in, and we go out deep into space, in between the stars, far, far, far away from any planet, any star, anything. We're really out in the middle of nowhere in space. We're not talking between Earth and Mars. We're talking between the stars, light years away from anything big. All right, so if you were in such a room, you would be floating. I mean, where's gravity? Where's up and down? There is no gravity. There's no gravity. So therefore, you're just floating. You'd be just as, as likely to be on the ceiling as you are on the floor, as on a wall or in a corner or something. So inside your room, you would be floating. And But here's the difference, is that all the laws of physics stay the same. Okay, so another idea is that let's say you're falling inside of a gravitational field. Um, I had the experience of that once when I was in the World Trade Center and we went up to the 70th floor and then from the 70th floor, roughly just before we got to our stop, the elevator cable sort of broke or it actually loosened or something and we plummeted down to about the 30th floor. So we had about 40 floors of free fall. That's no fun. So. I, you know, the elevator brakes kicked in, so I'm okay, And but the, I was really felt for the pregnant woman right next to me. In any event, so uh, that ended up being a very strange experience because of free fall. Now, when you fall freely inside of a gravitational field, you feel like you're floating. It really does feel that way. You're, you're lighter and everything. But in any event, that's the second situation, is that you're freely falling in a gravitational field. Okay, now what's the fourth, third situation? The third situation is, you will be in a room just like this on the surface of the earth. All right, that's normal. And then let's actually make up a kind of a funny one in that let's pretend for just a second that this room all of a sudden has some magic alien that comes to it, straps a bunch of rockets around the outside of the room, and within just a fraction of a second, the tiniest fraction, so I don't notice it or nobody inside the room notices it, the engines turn on, they have a thrust of exactly 1G, and the Earth is removed out from underneath. So this is a rather elaborate prank being played by these crazy aliens, whoever they might be. So we can imagine then we're in the middle of a rocket, and the rocket is accelerating up upwards at 1g, so which is the same acceleration that you feel if you drop something on the Earth. So, the, so there's our four situations. One, completely out in the middle of space with nothing around us. Two, freely falling inside that same room, but then the room is falling in a gravitational field and we're not worried about wind resistance or burning up in an atmosphere or anything like that. We're just gonna get rid of that for now. The next one is we're standing on the surface of the Earth and we're seeing how things work inside the room. And the fourth one is we're in a rocket that's accelerating upwards at 9.8 meters per second squared. Now, the funny thing is, is that Einstein's theory of relativity says the following that all freely falling frames, all freely falling reference frames are equal. Another way of saying it is that you don't feel your own weight while you're falling. 
That's another way of saying it. So if we have that, then if you look at the first two situations, way out into space and falling in a gravitational field. And oh, the second postulate is, in every freely falling reference frame, all of the laws of physics are the same in any given one. So you have one over here and one over there. They happen to be freely falling. Each of the internal people would measure the same things and see the same, uh, uh, see the same laws of physics. There would be no difference between them. Now they might be going in different directions. That's a different thing, but direction doesn't matter. We're talking about the laws of physics themselves. Okay, so let's just look at that first pair, the first pair and play a game. And the first game is, now I'm floating in space, and I take out my laser, and I shoot my laser across the room. Now, if I'm freely falling in the middle of interstellar space and there's nothing around, we expect the laser to go straight across the room and hit a target on the other side. And the target goes ping when it, it gets a, when it, the laser hits it. So maybe we're having a funny little sort of, sort of a Coney Island version of this thing. So you have a laser on one side and a thing goes ping on the other and says, I, may, I got hit by the target. So the target gets hit and makes a ping noise. That, whatever. Or just simply records it. But I like the ping sound because it's fun. Anyway, so... What happens then if we say that all freely falling reference frames are equal? Now, is that person way out in space freely falling? The answer is, well, he's certainly not not falling. How do you like that for a way of talking? He's certainly not not falling, so therefore he is falling. He's basically not falling anywhere, so that since he's not falling anywhere, he's kind of falling in place. And another way of thinking that is, there's no gravity, so he doesn't feel anything, so he's basically floating. And so floating, without falling is the same thing as falling. So if they're the same thing, then here's what the person sees if he's in the room. I, so now I'm in the room, I'm floating because now I'm falling towards the earth at relatively speed. I'm uh, picking up at 9.8 meters per second squared, getting rid of all the atmosphere, not worrying about that. And I take my laser and point it across the room. What do I see inside the room? I'm freely falling towards the surface of the earth. Don't worry about that crash landing. I got airbags and everything like that and the cables will stop, whatever. But I shoot my laser across the room. It hits the target and goes ping. It's the same as if I'm in deep space. So those two are equal, but there's a difference. In the first instance, way out in deep space, let's say now I've got a buddy of mine and a buddy of mine is outside the spaceship and he's looking in and he sees me playing around with this laser and says, don't point that in my eyes, buddy. And so yeah, I'm shooting this across and he sees me hit the target. All right. So now, let's say my buddy is, is standing far away from me as I'm falling inside the room towards the surface of the earth. He feels helpless, he can't see, he can't help me stop falling, but he sees me falling. There's a difference. It's actually falling in a gravitational field. Now, he also, I mean, remember, the laser goes across the room, hits the target and says ping. Right, now, what does my friend who's far away see? So let's just, uh, just for the sake of argument, I'm gonna call him Tony. He says, Tony is outside. He's looking at me falling down. I got my laser, I shoot it across. What does Tony see? Well, he also sees the target get hit by the laser because the laser has to hit the target. There's no such thing as not hitting the target just because you're looking at it from a different perspective. So the laser goes across the room and hits the target. But I'm falling towards the earth. So Tony sees the following. He sees the entire thing falling downward, and it takes a little bit of time for the laser to go across the room as it's falling. So there's a height change, which means that the target changes position from when the laser was fired. So the laser and target were here at the time of firing, and at the time of pinging, they're here. So the only way it could have possibly hit across is if the laser, if it starts here and then it goes across and down. So according to Tony from the outside, the laser does a curved path downward towards the direction that you're falling. Wow. So from the outside, it looks deflected. From the inside, it looks the same. That's principle of relativity. And that makes sure that we actually have a laser firing and a target being hit. So what does that mean? That means that we are seeing that there are two equivalent reference frames. The both of them are freely falling but one of them is falling in a gravitational field, so therefore the path is bent, according to outside observers. 
Inside, you see it's uh, sh shooting straight across, but outside, because I can perceive your law, your gravity, because I see the elevator falling, because Tony sees me falling. Tony sees me falling in the gravitational field, so he must see the path of light bent. Okay, that's all very interesting, um, which shows that there's a change in the path according to an outside observer. An outside observer sees the curvature of light. Ah, all right, so now, what do we get from the other two examples? So, but remember, okay, let's just go back. So why don't I see this curvature going on? Because I'm freely falling with the reference frame. So as I freely fall, I see it, I'm watching it go as it goes. I am in a local inertial reference frame. I'm locally, so I'm locally falling. So this local thing is the same. All of the laws of physics are the same inside my room no matter what, so it's gotta go in a straight line. If it did curve, I'd go, what's going on there? It'd be something strange going on, because then why is the light all of a sudden changing direction? Since there's no additional laws of physics just because I'm falling in the inside of the room, then the light must go straight across the room inside of the falling room. Okay, so now we have two more situations to look at. Let's say instead, I'm standing, well, uh, let's make it easier. Let's go to the rocket example. So now I'm gonna go to the rocket. And now I'm standing at the bottom, on the floor of a rocket, and the rocket is going upwards at 9.8 meters per second squared. Well, that just so happens to be the same acceleration due to gravity that we feel on Earth. So what do I get? I'm standing on the bottom of the rocket, the rocket's going upward, I shoot a laser beam across the room, and what do I see? Inside of this reference frame, uh-oh, I see it go straight across. I see it go straight across, but I also see it bend downward. I see it bend downward. So this is kind of a crazy thought. Why do I see it bend downward? Because what does my friend Tony see from the outside? Tony, from the outside, sees the following. The rocket is going upwards, so he's perceiving my acceleration as movement, as actual speed, a speed change. Since it's an acceleration upwards, he sees the rocket doing the following. I shoot my laser across the room, and, what does, and then what occurs? Well, the rocket goes up. Now, in normal space, remember there's no gravity with the rocket thing, there's, we're not rocketing off of the surface of the Earth, we're simply rocketing in space in without the presence of any mass or anything like that. What do, does Tony see away just simply as a result of the rocket speeding up with acceleration? He sees the following, the laser going straight across. But what does that mean, the laser going straight across? When I shoot the laser, it goes straight across the room. But Tony sees the fact that the rocket is going upwards and, and there's nothing attaching the laser to the rocket. It's not like I'm attached to the laser. It's like a thing that is like a brick or a whole thing. No, the, the photons are free and they travel across the way. And this as a result of the fact that the speed of light is the same for all observers. Okay, so the speed of light goes across. I mean, the light goes across as a laser and because the rocket's accelerating upwards, the target on the far side of the wall goes up a little bit after the fact that as, as the target moves, as the laser source moves, the target moves up. So therefore, in order for, so what Tony sees is that he sees the laser hit lower towards the floor because the floor kind of comes up to meet the laser. That's what happens. So Tony sees from the outside, when I shoot a laser across, that it hits the bottom of the, of, he sees, he perceives, and he is correct, that he sees it hit basically by the floorboards. So you have a floorboard hit, but what I see, I see it simply bending downward. Why? Because the path of light is straight. Since the path of light is straight, then therefore the path is straight, but the rocket's moving. Since the rocket's moving, the path then becomes curved to an observer inside the rocket. Okay. Now, one of the more important principles of the principle of equivalence, according to Einstein, leads us to an amazing, amazing idea that there is no difference between an acceleration due to gravity and an acceleration due to motion. 
meaning the mass that you feel, the ma mass measurements. There's no difference between inertial mass and, and, uh, and gravitational mass. Since there is no difference between the inertial and gravitational mass, forces and accelerations act the same on everything, right? So let's look at what this means for us. You can't tell an acceleration due to speed compared to an acceleration due to gravity. They're the same thing. It's just an acceleration. There's no, oh, acceleration due to gravity. Oh, acceleration due to speed. They're separate laws of physics. No, they're the same laws. Since they're the same laws, they're the same acceleration. So if I were now to simply park myself on the surface of the Earth and point my laser across the room, the laser should bend downwards. And that's what I see inside the room. So four separate situations with a laser going across the room. The first situation, we're out in deep space. The laser goes across the room from a source to a target. The target goes ping. It's a straight line according to me, because I'm floating in space, and according to Tony, who's outside watching it, because there's no motion. Second, we then put the whole room inside, uh, let it fall in a gravitational field. The target falls as after it falls as I fall. So Tony from the outside sees that the target goes down. So there from the outside, the path changes and becomes bent. However, inside, I see a straight line because I'm freely falling. Now, we take away the idea of freely falling because now we say, well, if we're freely falling, then the gravitational field must bend the light. So if we take away the aspect of freely falling and have something kind of pushing back up against us, maybe the floor. So the floor is pushing back up so that we don't fall through the floor. But the bending still occurs. And so inside of the, inside the rocket, the rocket goes across as the, the target goes up as after and it meets the uh, and so therefore the light goes straight across as viewed by Tony from the outside because we're very far away from everything way out in deep space this is the rocket in deep space accelerating thing the line is straight and so then Tony sees it hit the far target and ping and the target is at the floorboard that's the only place where it'll hit therefore it, since that situation is identical to what we have on earth the laser simply must bend downwards in a gravitational field. Now, how much does it bend in a gravitational field at the surface of Earth? Not a lot. It's a very small amount. The radius of curvature is on the order of a couple light years if we approximate the bending by a circle. So it's not something you can easily measure. But that's the idea that, but in stronger gravitational fields, it becomes more important. So that's a, a one example of the nature of, of curvature of space. The, that's what we mean by curvature. Curvature is you can't necessarily put the same coordinate system on every place in all of space-time because you have changing core, you have changing aspects to it. La, uh, the universe, uh, space-time changes, or at least the uh, rate by which things fall inside that space-time changes as based on the location that you are in that space-time. So you have local little places where things behave very similarly, but there's lots of little local places. In fact, there's many, many local places. A lot, every place is a local place. So locally inside these tiny places, in tiny, tiny rooms, there are no changes in, uh, due to the falling, freely falling in space-time. Okay. Next time, we'll go the other way, upwards. See you next time.